I believe that God is going to do something amazing in the church. And I believe that the next move of God is going to be really something about His glory. I believe God wants to fill his, this, the place with His glory, His presence. Amen? You look at me like a cow looks at a new gate. Have I got something wrong with me? Am I okay? I, I have lost weight, by the way. <laughs> but I, uh, so I want, to, I want to preach over the next few weeks. I'm not too sure how long this will go. Releasing what is in you. Uh, I want to build a layer foundation to build this message on. I want God to be able to open our eyes and uh, do some things. You see, when a person paints a painting, it might start with something. And I've watched and I've seen some painters that they, they start with something. You look at them and think, what is that? And, uh, and, you know, and all of a sudden you say, oh, yeah, I can see the stream. I can see that. And I can see the hill there. And then all of a sudden they start planting trees and they start doing that. And next minute there's a bird. Next minute there's a fish jumping in the river. And, and the, the picture takes on new meanings and new thinkings and goodness knows what else. So there's a lot of things there that, that we need to share to be able to release what God has put inside of you. You are the salt of the earth. If the salt loses its flavor, it's good for nothing but to be trampled under the feet of men. And, and I just want to say to you today that I believe that God wants to raise up His church. He wants to do more than you and I could ever imagine or think. But He's going to do it through us. God loves us. And uh, Jesus will have a church. He will have a people that will rule and reign on this planet. You believe that today? He will have it because He said it. I believe God is knocking on the door of the church. The called out ones. And I want to read some scriptures from the book of Revelation chapter 3. I'm going to read from verse 14. And the angel of the, and the, angel of the church of the latter of sins write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you are cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. It's an amazing thing here that God loves the church. He wants to do so much in us. But because of us, the blockages in our lives, wrong thinking, wrong teaching, whatever it might be, we've got lukewarm or, or we're cold. And God says that I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. You see, in it, we the church, we can think that everything's okay. We can think, oh man, I got it all together. I'm, I, I'm, I'm being blessed, I'm being touched, and I'm this and I'm that. But it's not how I see myself. It's how God sees me. It's what God sees in the church. God is looking down at the church. He's, he's looking down at people. He's watching what's going on. He's looking for something in people. He's looking for faith. He's looking for people that will, will humble themselves. He's looking for humility. He's looking for a lot of things in the church. And a lot of times he doesn't find it because of success, because of this, because of that. We think we don't need anything. We don't even really need God. We can do this. We've got this thing underhand. We're, 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 we're doing good. We're, we've got plenty of money. We've got plenty of this. We've got plenty of that. Plenty of people. But God looks at it and He says, I, I know your works. Because you say I am rich and become wealthy and have need of nothing, yet you do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. It says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with ice love, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door. Let me just say as I'm saying this, 
Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. But then he says, If anyone hears my voice. Tom was saying today that we all can hear from God. And we can. But have we got an ear to hear what God is really saying? Do we have a, do we have a heart that's open? Say, God, will you refine me? God, will you, will, you, will you do a work in my life? Because, God, you want to use me and you want to pour out of my life. And, and there's substance inside me that you want to use. But if the door is shut, if the door is locked, there's nothing much you can do in me. God, I need my eyes to be opened. I, I need to be able to hear what you're saying. Jesus, you're standing at the door and knock. But if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Jesus wants to have intimate relationship. He wants to, he wants to bring us into something. He just doesn't want us, you know, just a little bit of a friendship. And, you know, you, we can have a lot of friends. But how many people do we really invite into our home? How many people do we really say, come and eat with me, come and dine with me? They're your closest friends. But I want to tell you that Jesus wants to be our closest friend. He wants to dine with me. He wants me to dine with him. He wants to come into me. He wants to come around me. He wants to surround me. He wants to clothe me. He wants to, he wants to touch my life. He wants to reveal the purposes and the plan. He wants to touch us. But if the door is shut, he can't come in. Some time ago, I shared about a knocking on the door, and I said, you know, when you open up the door, open up the screen door as well. It's so when the Jehovah's come around, I just open up the door, but I leave the screen door shut. <laughs> but when Jesus comes, you've got to open up all the doors. You've got to open up everything and let the King of glory come in, the Lord strong and mighty. I want to dine with you and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. I believe that this is the greatest invitation humanity can ever have. This is the greatest invitation you'll ever, ever read. That Jesus said, I want you to come and sit with me upon my throne. God is going to have a group of people on this planet who are going to rule and reign with Him. You're going to have a people that are going to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. People are very, very fussy today with what they eat. They don't really want to eat good food. They just want to eat the, the, the cream and the, and, the, and the cake and things like that. But I want to tell you, friends, I believe it's time for the church to start to eat a bit of good old meat, to hear what God is saying that will cause us to bow our knees and humble ourselves and, and, and allow the presence of God to get around our lives. To he, him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me upon my throne. As I also overcame and sat down with my Father on His throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Father, you're knocking on the door. You're here wanting to touch us. God, I pray today that by Your Spirit, we would consciously open the doors of our life, open the doors of, of, of whoever we are, our mind and everything about us, the ministry gifts that are on our life, that we'll let you come in, my God, that you'll let us touch us. Lord, it's not what we say about ourselves. It's not how great we think we are. Because, Lord, you might look at us and say, you're poor, wretched, naked, and blind. But, Father, I pray today that you will be able to clothe us. You'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to buy from you that gold that has been refined, my God, that we would be able to feed upon the, 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 the greatest thing. And Lord, we know that it's not a natural food that you want us to eat upon, it's not the natural food that you want us to dine at, but God, you want us to feed at your table where revelation knowledge will come from your word, where we'll have understanding of what you're saying, where you'll be able to speak to us and we'll hear it. And my God, we will respond to what you're saying. And Lord, we'll give you all the praise, we'll give you all the glory, and everybody said, Amen. You see, God never ever intended for the door to be shut. That wasn't God's plan to shut the door. Man shut the door. Our wrong thinking shuts the door. 
Wrong attitudes shut the door. Sin shuts the door. Stuff that gets around our lives shuts the door. The Bible says, in, in, and I've mentioned this scripture many times in Matthew 23, verse 13, But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, pastors and teachers, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven. We can shut up the kingdom by wrong talking, wrong teaching, wrong stuff. I want to say this with every fiber of my being, if ever there's a time that the church needs a fresh understanding of the revelation of God is today. What God's about, what God expects, what God wants, who God is, who we are. Heard the other day that we're, we can be like people that, that look in a mirror and forget who we are. We come to the Word of God and, and, and we forget because we hear all these wonderful things that Jesus said. When our brother shared this morning there, and, and the scriptures, amazing scriptures, amazing words, and all those promises that just oozes out of that, of those passages. Friend, I want to tell you, if we could just grab hold of that today and believe that, we would be changed forever. But we see it, we hear it, and then we walk away and we forget what God has and says about us. Who we are. I want to tell you, you are more than a conqueror. We are, we are, we are. We are somebody, amen. I'm a child of the Most High God. And if God be for me, who can be against me? But if I can rise up with that knowledge and, and when the enemy comes in with wrong thinking and wrong thoughts, I can stand against him with the Word of God, he will flee from me. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. But many times when the enemy comes, we embrace him. We embrace his lies. We embrace the negativity. But God, I believe, wants to do some things. He says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering or those who are seeking to go in. You don't allow people to go in. A highly respected pastor, a guy that I really, really respect, it's an Australian pastor, went to a major conference. And this is what he said. He said, people were shouting and stomping their feet, saying amen. But he said the speakers were contradicting each other. See, we don't, we, we don't know what's up and what's down. How, how are we going to know? Everything sounds good. Everything's wonderful. Hey, shakabundi. But though that... If anybody that's got a bit of knowledge about the Word of God, he said, these people were all contradicting each other. We really need to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen? Man shuts the door, and I believe by God's will, man will open the door. I believe that. In uh, Matthew chapter 8, 28, the Bible says that there was two demon-possessed men when Jesus came out of the boat and began to to walk up this, uh, up, uh, up this, whatever it was, walking up the beach. <laughs> There's a man that had been, in, two men that had been in the tombs, cutting themselves and crying out and carrying on. And it says that these two guys there, when they came, when they saw Jesus, and Jesus there, and, and, and these men were there with a purpose and with a plan. Their plan was to stop people from going that way, the Bible says. You see, there are demonic forces that are there to stop people, shutting doors. There's wrong things there that are wrong teaching, wrong thinking. Everything shuts the door. You see, if God says that, that by my stripes I am healed, but I don't really believe that, well, then that door that Jesus opened is now shut. It's shut to me because I don't really believe it, because I don't. Confess it. I, it's, it's just a myth. It's just another fa fable. It's just another story. And so as, as what God has opened, you see, when Jesus paid the price with those stripes, I am healed. Amen. That's the truth of the matter. But you see, so much unbelief has come into the church today that we, we battle now. The church battles. You know, one of the hardest things and saddest things that I've heard recently by many, many pastors, they say it's easier to get somebody healed in the street that do not know Jesus than in the church. 
Some people are nodding. Because we've been so messed up, you know what I mean? We need an earthquake. <laughs> we need a shock treatment. We need something that will shock us out of, of the hardness or the lukewarmness that's got around our lives. See, God, we were made by God. We were made for God. God has got a purpose for my life. And I might be living on this planet and the purpose that I'm living may not be God's purpose. May not be God's purpose. Roma would be interested, this man that was ministering there. 30, his son, 39 years of age. At a, at a youth camp, or 36, at a youth camp, and a storm was coming over. He, had his, he was going to preach that night, ready to preach, had all his notes there. He's going to preach on heaven. Going to preach on, on something about the, the, the eternity. But as he was ushering the kids in, lightning struck him and he was dead. Killed him. And this man could not understand it. He could not work it out. He said, he said today, four or five years later, he said, I still walk with a limp. I still walk with a limp. But I have to understand that God is supreme. And the foundations of his life is what's kept him going. A little while after that, he found out that he had cancer. The nurse came into him one day, looked at him because she saw his Bible on, on, the, on, on his desk, on the thing where they feed you. And she looked at him and she said, do you still believe that? Your son was killed. Your other son had a major catastrophe as well. Now you've got cancer and you still believe that. And he looked at her and he said, as a matter of fact, I do. It is my hope. She said, three people died in this ward this morning from the same condition that you have. But somehow or other, you're still here and you're still smiling. And she looked at him with tears rolling down her face and she said, can I hug you? The doctors are so... just mystified by, by this man's faith. Friend, we can't be lukewarm. We've got to believe God, amen. He got out of the hospital bed because he was invited to go overseas to preach. He got out of the hospital and went overseas. When he got to, the other, got to his destination, he went straight into hospital for a blood transfusion. Got out of hospital and then went and preached the conference. <laughs> Amen. Oh, poor old Tom's little splinter. <laughs> I've had those splinters, though, Tom. They're very annoying. But see, there's something that's got to start to change. In a, in, if we're going to be the church, let's be the church. Let's stand against and not let every little thing uh, destroy us. We say Jesus reigns, but many times confusion reigns. No one could pass that, wa that way, but Jesus came. Though there was a legion of demons in those guys, He came. And I want to tell you, He's going to come again. Uh, he's not going to come in the natural, perhaps. He's going to come through His church, His body. And that's where we've got to change. That's where we've got to allow things to happen. We really need to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. I want you to read with me in 2 Timothy 3.
I don't think anything takes God by surprise. He said, but know this in verse 1. In the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. Listen to that. Having a form of godliness. I think the church can have a form of godliness but is it what, what's, what else is in there? But denying its power. Come on. I want the, how many people want the power of God to come again? Come on, will you lift up your hands with me right now? Come on, Lord. Come on, we need your power. We need the power of God. Amen. We need the anointing. We just don't need froth and bubble. We don't need fluff, my God. We need your power. Anoint us again with power that we will speak with boldness and with authority. My God, raise up your church, my God. Pour out your spirit upon it. Pour out your spirit upon it, my God. Anoint us with fresh oil. Open our eyes, my God. Open our eyes. Put on the garments. Put on the garments of praise. Put on those garments that have been washed. Oh, Lord, let us buy gold from you that's been refined. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can I, somebody just yell out, hey. Come on, just do that again. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Where do I get to? <laughs> Having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who... Oh, no, I'm going to talk about it. Amen. <laughs> If we believe we are in the last days, we need to be aware. In the last days, God says, in Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 14, it says, You will find Him when you search for Him with all your heart. God wants you to know His plan for your life. He wants you to know that there is a plan for your life. Our purpose is not just to, uh, to build houses and make money. The Bible says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God wants you to have houses. God wants you to have finance. God wants you to have everything. Everything that you need, He wants you to have those things. But you've got to put them in the right perspective. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You believe that today? I believe that our purpose is to be a voice, a voice of righteousness, a voice to make disciples. Inside of you right now is God's purpose and plan for your life. I'm going to say this over and over over the next uh, few weeks, whatever it is, so as, until it gets right down on the inside of me. Every time I walk into my garden, every time I, I look at a rose tree, every time I look at another bush, I, I've got wild raspberries out there. Somebody told me they're very good for you. <laughs> I walked in there to get one the other day and there was a snake in there frightening the living daylights out of me. <laughs> but I told everybody that there's snakes there so they don't go in there now and there's plenty of raspberries for me. Uh, so we need to understand, every time I look there, I look at that thing and, and I cannot see what it's going to produce, but I know it's going to produce because that's what it's designed to do. And I've got to look at the church and I know, even though it may not look like it's doing it, as we look over Australia, we look at the church, it may not look like it's going to produce what we know it should produce but I want to tell you, when God looks down, He says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. I'm going to put my heart within them. I'm going to put my Word within them. I'm going to put my dreams in them. I'm going to wake them up in the middle of the night. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that until they rise up, until they rise up. I'm going to raise up men and women that are going to pre preach my Word with a power and with authority. I'm going to reach out, reach out and anoint people that they will be anointed. And when they speak, it will cut through like butter, like a knife through butter. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break through. I'm going to build up. I'm going to strengthen. I will raise up a people. God is going to do it, friend. God is going to do it. Not because Neil said it, but it's because God said he's going to do it. I will build my people. I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I'm going to anoint people. I'm going to, I'm going to wash their eyes. They'll see. I'm going to come and I'm going to feed them on the, on the finest. They're going, to, they're going to have revelation and understanding. But inside you right now is God's purpose and plan for your life. Why you exist on this planet. We've got to understand that, that we are totally His. I belong to Him. I gave my life to Him. He can do whatever He wants in my life. He can use me however He wants. I am totally His. Amen. I, I want Him to be able to be Lord of my life. But un unfortunately, many times we want to hold it to ourselves. Why do you exist on this planet? This purpose is just waiting to burst forth like a rose springing forth. The evidence is a rose. But I want to tell you, there's an evidence that God wants to bring forth in every one of us. Power, authority over the works of the enemy. My rose bush can try as much as it likes. It will never, ever produce a peach. And you can want to be something that God has never ordained you to be. And if you'll keep going after that, you'll never make it. You just got to say, God, what can I do for you? What do you want me to do for you? And it may be to start with, go and peel the potatoes and the pumpkin. But if you obey, you'll find that that will open a door. And it will take you to your destiny. We've got to be able to not just want to covet somebody else's gift. My rose tree will never ever produce anything else but a rose. Unless an enemy can graft in something different, a different wood. That's why Jesus, I believe, has to cut out the dead wood so we can produce fruit, fruit your purpose. You can sow things into your life that will produce good things or produce death. Just go after the Lord. Amen. Jesus found a man called Saul. He had a God-given purpose in him. But he didn't understand it. He wanted to serve God. He wanted to serve God. He honestly wanted to please God. That was a God put in him. But because of wrong teaching, wrong thinking, he, he pursued what he felt was the call of God in a wrong way. That he went out to persecute the church, persecute the thing. But then Jesus, of course, we know on the road of Damascus, that Jesus appeared to him. I don't know about you, but friend, if I'm on the wrong course, if I'm going wrong, I want a Damascus experience. If we're not going right, if we're, there's something here that offends God, if there's something here that's wrong, my heart is to please God. And that's why God could come to Saul, because really his heart was to please God. But he was doing it wrong. Moses wanted to please God, but he did it wrong. His heart was to please God to be the Redeemer, to be the, the Savior of his nation. But he did it wrong. There's a lot of things we can do, friends, that are wrong. If we've had wrong thinking, wrong teaching. But he had a Damascus experience. The enemy grafted something into him. And the fruit was bad. 
came to bind Christians. False religion will do that to you. It will bind people. God's purpose for him was to release and restore people, set them free. That's what God's purpose for us is. Jesus found 12 men. Some were fishermen. Some were this and some were that. They had their careers made up. They had their minds made up. This is what we are. I'm a fisherman. One was a tax collector. Somebody else was this. Somebody else was that. And they were going on their merry way, doing what they thought was right. But you see, inside of every one of them was a God-given purpose. That was not even in their thinking, perhaps. Not even in their imagination, perhaps. But all that the master had to do was say, come, follow me. And immediately the presence of God got in and something, this thing inside them burst open. He called them. Then he breathed on them that the real purpose that was planted in them would burst into life. Come up here, Nancy. I was a builder. Had my own building thing. I was also had a Real estate agency. Nance was an article clerk <laughs> when we met. She worked in a solicitor's office. That was our lot, I thought. But no, he touched us. He touched us. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me. And made me whole. Amen. Revealed his purpose to me. Something happened that day. Metamorphosis started taking place. Started to do its work. The builder became a preacher. The clerk became a force to be reckoned with. Breaking strongholds, setting captives free, binding the strong men. Most of the church here wouldn't have a clue what Nancy does. She ministers to people from any denomination, anywhere, anyhow, anywhere. She goes in there like a fox terrier after a rat. <laughs> the old clerk became a terrorist. Demon terrorists. Amen. Bind them the strong man. Bind them the strong man. Amen. Friend, we're not here to play church. We're not here just to muck around. I don't want to just play. There's nothing left, so yeah, okay. That's the last page. <laughs> we're not here to play church. We want to we want to see the kingdom of God established. Amen. We want to see the glory of God come down. Want to see, but I know that enemies will come in and try to sow bad seed, try to sow bad wood. This is our eighth birthday, and and I want to say this that most surely today, I, you know, when I when we started, I remember ringing David up. I said David, we're going to come up here and plant a church. Can you find a building? And he found this building for us. David Cherry, that is. You know, I, I thought we'd have thousands of people by now. But you know what I found? Not too many people want to hear that message that I just preached. They don't want to hear that. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. Tell me that I'm good. Tell me I don't need to change. Tell me that I'm rich. Tell me I'm okay. You gotta tell it like Jesus though. There's times there when I know I'm wretched, naked, poor. But I want to tell you, I believe. I be I'm still believing, amen. I'm still believing, amen. I'm still believing. I'm still believing. God's given us some wonderful people. I thank God for the twenty-five to thirty people that come and pray every Tuesday night. 
I would love to see a hundred people there. I'd love to see 50. <laughs> would you believe 30? <laughs> love to see you there. But we're going to win. We'll win. Amen. So, praise God. What are we going to do now? Amen. Eight years, another eight, cut the cake. But before that, let's just... God, where do I fit in this thing? Where do I fit? How can I be more effective? What can I do? What can we do, Lord? What can we do? Father, I just ask you today that you'd pour in the oil and the wine, the kind that restores. Father, I pray today that by your spirit you'd just come around us and help us. Amen. I'm just going to, before we cut the cake and anything like that, I, I, I want to open up this altar because I just feel the presence of God here. This, I, I believe God wants to break some strongholds in our lives and wrong thinking, wrong thoughts, wrong stuff. And, and uh, I believe that there's some people here that you realize that, that God wants to get a hold of your life. God wants to, God wants to uh, do something. I don't, know, I, I don't know how to put it, but you just know that there's something in your life that God wants to get at. And, and he wants to breathe on it. And he wants to uh, encourage you. So I'm just going to open up this altar. It's not, I know this is not easy in the atmosphere that we've created here uh, in the natural, but just stand up. There's another atmosphere, a spiritual atmosphere, that I believe if God's talking to you today. I want you just to slip out of your seat, and I want you just to come out and, uh, and let the presence of God get around your life. Amen. I, I just want to pray with some people today. I thought we were having a massive altar call then, but it was all the music thing. Come on, I believe that there's some people there that just say, God, I want... I want you to tweet something in my life. I want you to tweet something. I want you to tinkle with something. I want you to touch something. I want you to help me with something. I want, I, I, I'm not going to say lukewarm, but you know that really, you know where you are. But just come, just come. Let the Spirit of God touch you today. Let the Spirit of God just touch you. Let the anointing touch you. Let the presence of God touch you.